Battery startup Npower has come up with a really interesting way to improve the power density of lithium ion battery cells with what they are calling multi-layer anodes. Let's talk all about this exciting battery technology and then also discuss how it could in the future improve the range, charging speed, cycle life, and performance of batteries found in electric vehicles. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Npower is a battery technology startup that was founded in 2014, and they're currently developing a new revolutionary lithium ion battery technology that employs multi-layer anodes. This new lithium ion battery technology from Npower appears to be able to deliver not only high energy dense battery cells, but also at the same time, high power density in the same cell. Now, as we move into this technology, I think it's important right now that we step back just for a minute and we talk about the importance of power density and energy density. Let's quickly define those terms and talk about how they affect the performance of a lithium ion battery and an electric vehicle. First of all, let's talk about energy density and how that relates to battery cells. This is obviously a topic that we bring up quite a lot on this channel because it's an important topic. Often you'll hear me talk about volumetric energy density, which is the amount of watt hours that are found in a given liter. So watt hours per liter volumetric energy density. And then of course there is gravimetric energy density, which is the amount of watt hours that are um, in a given unit of weight. In this case, watt hours per kilogram is very common. When it comes to some of the specific energy density measurements, from Npower's prototype cells. On their website, they show this particular chart and they show both the volumetric and also the gravimetric there or specific energy density of their technology. And here on this chart, you can see how this compares to Tesla's 2170 battery cells. Now, when you compare the energy density of Npower's prototype battery cells to Tesla's 2170 battery cells, um, it may not seem that impressive, but when you realize that these battery cells also are able to produce a good amount of power, they're very power dense as well, it actually is quite impressive. So now let's move over to power density and why that's important. When it comes to how power density relates to the performance of battery cells, a very power dense battery cell um, is able to receive a greater amount of kilowatts during charging, and thus it should be able to charge quicker without damaging the battery cell. And on the performance side, when it comes to actually discharging the battery, it should be able to provide a good amount of watts, a good amount of power during discharging for performance situations. Now, when it comes to Npower's battery technology, as this chart from Npower's website demonstrates, generally lithium ion batteries can be designed to be either geared towards energy density or power density, but not generally both in the same battery cell. Npower's multi-layered electro technology flips this limitation on its head and allows for a single battery cell to be both energy dense and power dense at the same time. Here's another chart from Npower's website where they compare the energy density and power density of two popular 18650 cells, one from Panasonic and another from Samsung. And you can see that the Panasonic 18650 battery cell is an energy cell and the Samsung 18650 cell is a power cell. As this chart demonstrates there with that blue line at the top, which represents Npower's uh, prototype battery cells, Npower's battery technology is really able to combine the benefits of an energy cell and a power cell, and in one battery cell provide both good power density, good specific power, and both specific energy at the same time. Now, when it comes to how this all relates to charging speed, something I talked about earlier on, as you can see on this chart, once again, from Npower's website, their technology should be able to deliver an 80% charge in less than 15 minutes, which of course is faster than any other EV currently on the market. And according to them, this could be possible in the future without greatly sacrificing battery life due to the uh, architecture of their battery cell and the improved power density of their battery cells. So really to put this all together, if Npower's battery technology can deliver not only an energy dense battery cell, but also a power dense battery cell all in the same package, this could allow for a long range electric vehicle to have long life and the ability to charge very quickly um, without really sacrificing on either end. This is some really promising battery technology. 
Okay, now that we've talked about really the benefits of this battery technology, let's now move over to how these multi-layer electrodes or multi-layer anodes really work. In this article from InPower's website that compares InPower's multi-layered approach to traditional single-layer electro designs, they describe their design in the following way. Instead of depositing a single wet film coating onto a foil substrate, InPower simultaneously coats multiple slurries on the foil, one on top of the other. At the moment, InPower seems most focused on using this multi-layer technology on the anode side of the battery, but this article does state that, quote, multi-layer design strategies can be applied to both the anode and the cathode to improve specific performance parameters. InPower also has a special way of counteracting and reducing one of the key causes of battery cell degradation in traditional lithium ion batteries, and that is the lithium plating. As I understand from reading this white paper, one of the root causes of lithium plating is due to, as they mentioned, quote, non-uniformity in the states of charge of active materials throughout the electrode thickness, which from what I can understand during charging can lead to the electrode materials near the battery separator overfilling with lithium ions, which then leads to unwanted lithium metal deposits on the surface of the electrode material. These lithium deposits lead to decreased capacity. They can cause dendrite growth, which can eventually lead to battery failure. When it comes to how InPower's multi-layered approach helps solve this lithium plating problem, Adrian Yeo in this white paper describes the solution to this problem in the following way, quote, Recognizing the inherent non-uniform behavior in lithium ion electrodes, InPower is designing multi-layer electrode architectures with intentional Z-directional or out of plane heterogeneities specifically designed to counteract detrimental gradients throughout the electrode thickness. If InPower's new battery technology can limit the amount of lithium plating that happens, this obviously is going to result in longer uh, life battery cells, and this is actually really important. Now, so far I've described quite a few claims, but if you go to, once again, this white paper written by Adrian Yeo, the chief technical officer of InPower, they do have a number of test results from these battery cells that they publish in this white paper, and I'll definitely link to that in the video description. But in one of the tests related to discharge rates and capacity retention, this white paper mentions, quote, in this data set, the multi-layer anodes demonstrated a greater than 20% increased capacity retention at elevated discharge rates compared to the homogeneous baselines talking about the uh, single layer electro designs but 50 to 70 percent increased capacity retention has been demonstrated at in power utilizing other multi-layer design principles if you want to dive deeper into some of the technical aspects of this technology, I am currently in communication with InPower and I'm working to get a member of their team to come on and record a video call with me that I can share with you really diving deeper into this technology. Now, as I begin to wrap up this video, I think it's important that we just briefly talk about InPower's plans to commercialize these battery cells because after all, that's really what matters, not prototype cells, but when will we actually see these battery cells reach the market and how is InPower progressing towards this? One big factor that really kind of helps set InPower's battery technology apart from other new technologies is the fact that they are working to build these batteries. They're working on a battery technology that, as they say, will have no novel materials and no novel equipment because that's their mantra that they state on their website. So in the end, if all goes well, they'll be able to produce these battery cells on existing battery equipment that's proven and with existing materials that are proven. This is actually a huge benefit when it comes to commercializing this product in the future. In addition, in December of 2021, as they mentioned in a press release, they announced what they are calling their customer qualification facility, which is their pilot line facility in Indianapolis, Indiana, where InPower's manufacturing processes can be further improved and their battery cells can be further optimized. By the end of 2023, InPower aims to uh, expand this facility to 800 megawatt hours uh, per year. So in conclusion, InPower seems like they're well on their way to actually bringing this exciting new technology to market. And they have a really interesting approach to building a better lithium ion battery. It's also interesting that their chief operating officer, Earl Wiggins, was formerly the senior director of cell production at Tesla Motors. And I believe um, Earl is a great asset to the InPower team. 
I'll definitely be keeping my eye on NPower, and I look forward to seeing these multi-layer electrode battery cells hitting the market in the future. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.